When darkness filled the sky, the day that Jesus died, in agony upon the bitter cross, they took his body down and laid it in a tomb. His friends believed that everything was lost. But when the third day came, the darkness turned to light. For Mary heard her name and saw the living Christ. Reason to set the captives free. To ransom you and me, to bind up every broken heart, to conquer death and sin, reason to bring us home again. And in that barren place, the world. much for joining out in our Sunday live celebration. Last week, we have looked at the evidences of the resurrection, his empty tomb, the angelic declaration, and the testimony of the eyewitnesses. But before we go deeper, let's all pray right now. Heavenly Father, thank you for the resurrection has made differences in our lives, our behavior, our pattern of thinking, our conduct. Thank you, Holy Spirit, fall fresh on us. With your anointing and power, we pray that you continually open our heart, our mind to the truth of who our Lord Jesus Christ is. 
we desire to know Him and be intimate with Him, that our lives and those who are now in our live stream will be changed and saved for eternity. For we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. So the truth of the resurrection has been the foundation of true Christianity. For more than 2,000 years, the literal physical resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, His bodily resurrection from the dead, is so critical to all Christian believers. In fact, all the four Gospels wrote this, the Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. And it gives us an account of the resurrection and provides us multiple evidences of its reality. Surely we understand it if we made a huge difference in our life. Maiintindihan po natin ang resurrection kung mayroong pagbabago sa buhay natin. And in fact, you could ask a question, where are you going to spend eternity? How we treat each other, you know, how we respect each other, and how we worship God, and how we value and obey His word if we really understand what is resurrection. The Bible says in Romans 5.8, But God demonstrates His own love towards us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 5.8 Our belief about the resurrection of Jesus Christ starts with the fact that Christ rose from the dead. He is alive, seated at the right hand of God the Father. So here are some of the reasons why we must believe in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. First reason is because of the resurrection of Jesus, we were completely forgiven. Because of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we were completely forgiven. That's number one. No? Dahil po sa kapatawara, dahil sa sa kabatayan, sa uh, pagkabuhay magmuli na ating Panginoon, tayo ay nagkaroon ng kapatawaran sa ating kasalanan. Let's look at Ephesians chapter 1, verse 1. It says here, For He is rich in kindness. He is so rich in kindness and grace that He purchased our freedom with the blood of His Son and forgave our sins. He is so rich in kindness and grace. No? We have been completely been forgiven. The whole reason He died on the cross was so that you could be free from all of the guilt, all of the shame, and guilt wastes an awful lot of energy. It fatigues us. It ties you when you are... Uh, uh, on a guilty feeling, it robs you of your peace of mind. No? Pagka tayo po ay uh, guilty, hindi ho tayo misang makatulog. No? Hindi tayo mapakali. No? That's why uh, because of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we believe it, the Bible says that uh, we were forgiven. We were purchased our freedom with the blood of His Son, and forgave our sins. Ang Diyos po ay hindi nagalit sa atin. No? We are all imperfect. Hindi po tayo husto. So, we carry all regrets in life, even remorse. We always wish that we had done things differently. And we all have sins and things we feel bad about and guilty about things. God doesn't want us carrying a load of guilt or shame to life. But have you asked yourself, tanong nyo ba sa sarili nyo, who puts Jesus on the cross? The first answer is God. God did. God put Jesus, our Savior, on the cross. It was His plan from the very beginning. And that's why Jesus came to earth to die for our sins. That's the whole reason it was God's plan before any of us would ever be born. Look at this verse in Isaiah 53. Isaiah 53. If you look at that verse, in verse 6, For we all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned into our own 
way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. We all like sheep have gone astray. Each of us have turned to our own way and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. No? Tayo po ay mga ligaw na tupa. No? We don't know where to go. We move from one place to another and yet we don't have any direction. And the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Lahat po na ating mga kasalanan ay napunta sa ating Panginoon. In other words, we have done our own thing. We've left God's plan to follow our own. It says that yet the Lord laid on him, talking about Jesus, the guilt and sins of us all. From flogging, trial, and carrying the heavy wooden cross to Calvary, they led him away to his death. But who among the people realized? Sino pa mga kaisip noong time na yun? While our Lord Jesus Christ is being flogged, being tried, be, uh, carrying the cross to Calvary, being uh, nailed on the cross, who would ever thought? Yung mga tao do, did they realize that He was dying for their sins? That He was suffering from their punishment? No? Nobody realized that at that time. Even us today. Nobody realized. Nobody wants to know or, you know, even if they don't know, they don't want to acknowledge that Christ died on their behalf. And the next verse says, He was oppressed and afflicted, yet He did not open His mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and a sheep before its shearer is silent. So He did not open His mouth. He did not open his mouth. And the next verse says, By oppression, by oppression and judgment he was taken away. Yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living for the transgression of my people. He was punished. He was punished for the transgression of us all. And in verse 9, he was assigned a grave with the wicked. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, he did no sin, nor was any deceit in his mouth. And yet he was sacrificed, uh, you know, on the cross. He was crucified on the cross. And the next verse says, But it was the Lord's God plan, God's plan, good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. He will enjoy a long life and the Lord's good plan will pl prosper in his hands. It says there, but it was the Lord's good plan to crush him and cause him grief. Yet when his life is made an offering for sin, he will have many descendants. That is why... The Bible says that as many as who receive him, to them he gave them, and believe, to them he gave the right to become children of God. So dumami po yung mananampalataya ng ating Panginoon Jesus. Right? So the Bible says he did no sin. He knew no sin. In him there is no sin. He had done no wrong. He had never deceived anyone. But he was buried like a criminal and he was put in a rich man's grave. But it was God's plan. Plan po ito ng Diyos, no? That he should suffer for our sins. Have you thought about it? Naisip nyo na po ba yun? Nang ating Panginoong Jesus ay namatay para sa iyo. That's why every communion that we do every Sunday with bread and wine, we remember what Christ did on the cross. That he died for you and me. Why the communion is separate, bread separate from the blood, it signifies death. When blood is removed from the body of a person, that means that person is dead. Okay? His life was made an offering for sin. Isaiah prophesied that long time ago, 700 years before Christ came into the world. Okay? Before uh, the Messiah, the Savior. The Son of God 
comes to earth. And this happened exactly as what uh, the book of Isaiah mentioned. It was part of God's plan. But the second may surprise you too. Who put Jesus on the cross? We did. You and me, we put Jesus on the cross. If none of us would have ever seen, Jesus would not have to die for our sins. Kung wala pong nagkasala sa atin, hindi po mamamatay ang ating Panginoon Jesus sa krus ng Kalbari. The Bible says in Romans 4.25, He was handed, would you mind typing that? Romans 4.25, He was handed over to die because of our sins and He was raised to life to make us right with God. Jesus was handed over to die because of our sins and He was raised from the dead to make us right with God and who is included with, with that? It's you and me. Yes, we are made right with God. So we have been completely forgiven. And that gives us hope. We are not facing any judgment anymore, provided that we receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. Gusto nyo pong makasama sa gawain ito. Gusto nyo pong makasama. Ang ating Panginoon Jesus, when you die here on earth, and and leave this earth, you need to receive Him and accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior. And you will belong here. No? You will not face any judgment anymore. And we have hope because we have been completely forgiven. Okay? Amen? So the second reason why we must believe in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ, we now have God's Holy Spirit that lives inside of us. The Holy Spirit resides in us. No? Once we believe and receive our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit resides in us. Okay? Would you mind typing that? The Holy Spirit resides in us. The Holy Spirit resides in us. Let's look at uh, this verse, John 14, 15 to 18. It says there, I will pray the Father and He will give you another helper. Or in other translation, advocate. That He may abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth with, with whom or whom the world cannot receive. Because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. But you know Him for He dwells with you and will be in you. It says there. And then the next verse in... Uh, the next verse, hallelujah. Okay, I will pray to the Father, He will give you another helper that He may abide with you forever. And the Spirit from whom the world cannot receive. Sino po ito? It is the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit. And the other verse is Acts chapter 1, verses 4 and 8. Acts chapter 1. Verses 4 and 8. Tingnan po natin ito. I think I have uh, put this in place. Amen. Okay. Verse 4. Once he was eating with them. Once he was eating with them. He commanded them, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift. He promised, as I told you before, as I told you before, John baptized with water, but in just few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So the Holy Spirit has been promised to every believer. Uh, ipinangako po yan ng Diyos na tayo ay makakatanggap o maka marireceive natin ng Holy Spirit once we receive our Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Alright? Kaya ang sabi po dyan ni Lord, binigyan ng bilin ang mga disciples, ang apostles, do not leave Jerusalem until the Father sends you the gift He promised. No? John baptized with water, but in few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. Okay? And it says here in Acts 1.8, But you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will be my witnesses, telling people about me everywhere 
in Jerusalem, throughout Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Sino po ang kausap ni Lord dito? Yung mga uh, disciples, yung mga apostles po, yung mga tum- tumanggap sa ating Panginoon. It is important that we receive our Lord Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior. Okay? And so, in 10 days, no, after na sinabi niya yung Acts 1.8, on the 50th day, God sends His Holy Spirit to live with them everywhere they go. And even up to us now, no, the Holy Spirit is with us. And this is the second reason why Christianity is spread so fast after the resurrection because of the power of the Holy Spirit. They have seen face to face our Lord Jesus Christ and then He says to them, I'm going to send my Spirit to be in you and He's going to give you power. That is the power of the Holy Spirit which we need today. So the disciples had gone from fearful to fearless, from hopeless to hopeful, from being coward to be courageous. They've seen Jesus alive and He said what He said He is. And now he's saying, I'm putting my spirit in you. And they were empowered by the Holy Spirit. Do you know God never intended for you to go through life just on your own uh, you know, ability or in, in your own power? God wants to have a personal connection with you. And he wants to put his love, his power, his spirit inside you. And that gives you a supernatural advantage. It gives you additional power that you don't have on your own. And when you don't, you don't have that power, you know, you feel like you want to give up. Baka wala po ang kapangyarihan ng banal na spirito sa atin. You feel that you want to give up, that you are always tired, that you are restless, that you are wasting your time, you don't want to read the Bible, you might as well, you know, you just want to watch TV, you know, you feel always sick and tired, you know, sick and tired because you don't have deep power. The, you, you only have the natural power. But we must have the supernatural power and ability of the Holy Spirit. This separates us among the rest who are in the world. Meron tayo kapangyarihan. No? Meron tayo kapangyarihan. Hindi galing sa atin, kundi galing sa Panginoon. Okay? Because God wants us to always be plugged in in the power of the Holy Spirit. That is why when we, when we pray, we always invoke, we always ask, we always uh, uh, you know, pray that the Holy Spirit fall fresh on us. Kailangan po natin yung sa buhay natin. No? And here's the amazing thing. The same power that raised Jesus from the dead, that same power is available to us on a daily basis. The Bible says in Ephesians 1, 19-20, I pray that you will begin to understand how incredibly great His power is to help those who believe Him. It is the same mighty power that raised Jesus, raised our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead. The same power. Yung pong kapangyarihan na binuhay ang ating Panginoon mula sa patay, it is the same power that is with us, that is available with us today. If we only believe. And that happens because of the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. If God's Spirit can raise a dead Jesus, He can raise a dead marriage. If God's Spirit can raise a dead person, He can raise a dead career, a dead job. If God's Spirit you know, uh, uh, raise a, in, in resurrection power can raise a dead man, he can raise a dead dream. No? Meron na bang mga namatay sa iyong mga pangarap? God can raise it back if that is the will of God. And He can do anything in our life. He can do anything in our life and it's so easy. No? Magpasakop lang tayo sa Kanya. Sumurrender tayo sa Kanya. And what is this power? It's the power to be free from the past. No? Yung kapangyarihan na iwana natin ang nakaraan. No? It's the power to break those memories that has been holding us back yung mga nakaraan natin it's this, it, it is this power to start over again when you feel like you're giving up it's, it is the power to change things 
that you think that you can never ever change and you can't do it on your own. It's the power of the Holy Spirit to overcome habits, you know, to overcome hurts and hang-ups that hold us back. It's the power to keep us going when you are feeling to give up. This power is always available to us and that is the resurrection power. That gave us hope and is the reason we should and we must hope today. And for the last reason, this leads me to the third reason why we need to believe in the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ because there is an eternal home an eternal home waiting for us. An eternal home waiting for us. That's the third reason. Kailangan ng palataya tayo sa uh, muling pagkabuhay na ating Panginoon. Merong uh, tahanan na naghihintay sa atin. Our eternal home waiting for us. Let's look at this verse in John 14, 1-2. John 14, 1-2. Would you mind typing that? Hello, everyone. Typing that John 14 verses 1 and 2. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. Wow. That is what our Lord Jesus Christ mentioned. No? He said, let not your heart be troubled. Relax ka na. Do not be afraid. You believe in God, believe also in me. My father's In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, and I go to prepare a place for you. He did not only say that uh, in his Father's house there are many mansions, but he said he will go and prepare that for you. No? He is preparing our mansion in heaven amen and it says in verse 4 verse 3 in verse 3 it says there and if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again and receive you to myself that where i am there you may be also and where i go you know and the way you know no? and sabi ni lord if i go and prepare a place for you i will come again he did not only promise the place. He did not only prepare the place. No? He said he will come back. He will come back. No, babalik siya. Babalik siya in order for us to be picked up and, you know, and bring us to that mansion, our eternal home in heaven. No? Hindi ho ba nakakatawa yun, no? That we have, God is preparing an eternal place for us, a mansion in heaven kasi dito po sa planet earth we will only get 60, 70, 80 years old at the most people are getting uh, the age 100 no? but on the other side no? dito po no? away from the earth the other side of life which is in uh, in heaven no? we know that when we accepted our Lord Jesus Christ and that is the ticket going to the mansion in heaven. It will be trillions and trillions and trillions of years of freedom. No? We will be there for the last trillions and trillions and trillions of years. It will be forever, forever. Uh, the last uh, disciples to die was John, John the Apostle. Every Tuesday we have this the, the Book of Revelation series. And we were uh, already in chapter 9. John was the, the privileged one to be the last apostle to leave. The tradition um, wrote in one in some history books that John was sentenced to death in a boiling uh, pot of oil. No? You know what? He did not uh, die on the boiling pot of oil. He came out there unharmed. No? And tradition mentioned that John lived in an old age, dying sometimes, sometime in AD 98. Okay, actually the Romans tried to uh, poison him, but it didn't work. He's the only one out of the twelve disciples who did not die by by to, to be a martyr. 
So he was exiled as a priest in a prison colony called the island of Patmos in the middle of the Mediterranean. And he lived there on a quiet life, quiet life, an old man. And then the Lord revealed to him about the future of what will happen here on earth. Maguguno po ang mundo. So yung mga atheist, environmentalist, people are really taking care. And you know, they, they call the, the earth as the mother earth. No? The Bible says that later on, God will destroy this earth. And there will be a new heaven and a new earth. That is where we're going to go. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Let's look at that. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Would you mind typing that? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. What is our topic today? Jesus has risen. It says here that uh, things which I has not seen, just as it is written, Things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard and which have not entered the human heart, all that God has prepared for those who love Him. So, in other words, yung pong patutunguhan nating lugar where the mansion of God uh, prepared for us, hindi po kaya na ating isipan, pag-isipan. No? It's indescribable. No? Uh, here on planet Earth, ang... Uh, we're limited into three dimensions. No? Uh, we see beautiful places, houses, and so on. But what's we, what we have here in, in heaven, as Abirito, things which eye has not seen and ear has not heard. Kakaiba, no? And which have not entered the human heart. All that God has prepared for those who love Him. And do you want to belong to these people that God loves? No? It's amazing that the love and grace of God is available for everyone. Hindi po nagtatangi ang Diyos ng tao. The Bible says that God is not pleased when wicked perish. No? He wants all people to, to come back to Him. No? Uh, hindi po kinokondemn ng Diyos ang tao. But God is giving everyone time to repent. And believe in His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. In fact, what we have learned in Revelation so far, Revelation chapter 1 to 9, even in times of tribulation, tribulation means uh, this is the great uh, tribulation or time that the wrath of God has poured out on earth. Even at that time, God is, is uh, you know, giving warning, you know? is giving uh, His grace and mercy to everyone. If you just repent, yung mga naiwan po after rapture, God is even warning them to repent, to go back to Him so that they will be saved. Imagine that. That's the love of God. That's the beauty of our Savior, our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? So imagine the heaven that is a perfect place. We will all be there with sights and sounds and colors and smells. No? And it will be absolutely perfect. Perfect. Okay? It will be absolutely perfect. Okay? And that is the heaven or the mansion that God said is preparing for us. Again, it says there in 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. Would you mind typing that? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 9. No eye has ever seen, nor ear has heard, and no mind has ever imagined the wonderful things that God has prepared for those who love Him. For those who love Him. No? Sino po itong mga nagmamahal sa Kanya? Yung pong mga nagpakumbaba sa ating Panginoon. Yung pong nagpakumbaba. The resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ has changed everything. Alam niyo po ako, nung nakilala ko po si Lord, I was a former seminary for four years in a Catholic seminary. I didn't know the Lord. We don't have Bible there. No, we got the catechism book. But when I w came out from, from the seminary, my uh, classmate, who became my uh, best friend also, uh, brought me to a Bible study, to a cell group. And I learned about who Jesus is for the first time. I've been 
in a church almost every Sunday. And when I was in the seminary, every day we go to Mass. But I didn't realize I do not know personally our Lord Jesus Christ. And that is why when I realized through the Bible, the Word of God, that God loves me, that for God so loved the world, that He gave His only begotten Son, that whosoever believe in Him will not perish, but will have eternal life. So, doon ko lang po na-realize na mahal ako ng Diyos at kailangan kong maligtas. Why? It says here, in the ABC of salvation, it's so basic, admit that you are a sinner. Inadmit ko po na ako ay makasalanan. Inadmit ko po na ako ay nagkulang. No? Kahit po kami na uh, nasa seminaryo, mas lalo pong dumami ang aming kasalanan dahil na pakaraming tukso. No? So, wala po magsasabi, no one will say that he did not sin. So, letter A, admit that you are a sinner. I admitted that. B, believe that Jesus paid for your sin on the cross. No? It is only the sacrifice, the blood sacrifice on the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ that God the Father was satisfied is a, uh, a, uh, a purchase, a propitiation for all our sins. We were forgiven. Napatawad po tayo ng Diyos. Dahil sa ginawa ng ating Panginoong Jesus, He paid for our sins on the cross. That by His stripes we were healed. That by His blood we were forgiven. And see, confess that Jesus is Lord and call upon His salvation. Romans 10, 9 and 10, it says there that uh, if we confess with our mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in our heart that God has raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. Napaka simply po. This is not a new religion. This is not about religion. This is not about organization. This is not about anything else. This is not about your your goodness, your capability, your richness, your your career, your education, your family background, and so on. It's not about you. It is about the person of our Lord Jesus Christ who died for you and me. If you accept Him as your personal Lord and Savior, and receive Him in your heart. The Bible says in John 1, 12, to those who receive Him and believe, to them gave the power to become children of God. We need to believe the two words. We need to believe and receive. Do you want to receive Jesus Christ today as your personal Lord and Savior? Would you mind following me in prayer? Father God, thank you that uh, you have sent our your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross. I ask forgiveness for all the sins I committed. And today, cleanse me with your blood as I accept Jesus Christ as my personal Lord and Savior. And I thank you, Lord God, that you are alive, that uh, you you gave me this opportunity to love you, O oh Lord. I thank you, I praise you, I honor you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Father, thank you for the clarity with which the Scripture speaks to the glory and centrality of the resurrection. We thank you for giving us, at least briefly this morning, a picture of the full force of this incomparable event. We thank you that our Savior lives, and because He lives, all who are in Him will live as well. And because His life is eternal, so is the life that belongs to you, that belongs to Him, and in Him we live everlasting. We thank you for the forgiveness of our sins. We thank you for the power of the Holy Spirit, the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. And we thank you, you are preparing a place for us, our abode in heaven. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Uh, we, 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 we honor you, Lord, and we give you praise. We thank you and we believe in you, O God. At marami salamat, Panginoon. I pray for those people that are on the live stream right now. Lord, touch their hearts. Whatever um, things that are they are entangled with, mga problema sa buhay, Panginoon, ang dalangin ko, pangunahan mo ang kanilang buhay. Let them see your goodness and your mercy, O God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, 
and we honor you in Jesus' name. We pray. Everybody say, Amen. Amen. Now may the good Lord bless you and keep you. May His face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. God bless you for the whole week and to God be the glory. Amen. Amen.